good, Commanders fans? Just wanted to do a quick offensive coordinator update video. Uh, Ron Rivera is actually making this search bigger, widening the candidate pool way more than what I thought. I thought honestly, I thought I thought a decision would be made by today, uh, but they actually have some more candidates lined up. They did interview Pat Shermer on Thursday. They interviewed Ken Sampezi on Wednesday, who is already our quarterbacks coach. Um, they have a couple guys lined up. Thomas Brown from the Rams who is their, uh, basically their assistant head coach to Sean McVay and um, the tight ends coach as well, which is pretty, it's a pretty, it's pretty, it's a, he's a good candidate, man. He's a good candidate. He's a young guy, um, coach that he played running back in Georgia, was a six round pick as well. I'll, I'll get into everybody's bio real quick. And then they do, they do have, so Eric Studsville, who is the Dolphins assistant head coach and running back coach, Eric Studsville, his interviews on Monday, they will talk to Rams assistant head coach, tight end coach, uh, Thomas Brown, Brown next week for their vacant offensive coordinator. That is per John Kime. So um, we'll go over Ken Zampezi and, you know, what he brings to the table. We kind of already know him, the offensive coordinator. Um, didn't work out with the Bengals, but he was he was a good quarterback's coach for the Bengals. Coach Carson Palmer, Andy Dalton, um, his dad as well, coach with Don Coriel. He was his assistant. He was, he was his assistant head coach with the Don Coriel offense. Uh, he did coach Baker Mayfield. He was a quarterback coach to Baker Mayfield when Baker Mayfield, <coughs> excuse me, had a good rookie season. Uh, but Ken Zampezi did get fired as an offensive coordinator after two games in the 2017 season where they did not score a touchdown at all. So that's not good at all. They didn't score a touchdown at all. A.J. Green was fed up. He called out Ken Zampezi in the offense saying that he didn't get enough touches. Um, and then two games into that season, he got fired. So he was a good quarterback's coach, but offensive coordinator, not so much. Now, he was a wide receiver coach for the Rams. Um, back when the Rams had the uh, biggest show on turf, um, you know, rivalry receiver, greatest show on turf, um, rivalry receivers like Torrey Holt, Isaac Bruce, um, legendary wide receivers, running back Marshall Falk, um, Kurt Warner, of course. So they had, a, they had a heck of an offense. He was definitely involved in that. So Ken Zampezi, would I like that hire? It would be a mid hire, but you got to understand, of course, we're not attractive. Uh, we're not an attractive destination. That's, that's my kids running around upstairs if you guys hear them. But we're not an attractive destination. But it looks like people are actually interviewing because if they weren't interested in the job, they certainly would just turn it down. Like Jim Caldwell already turned it down. Daryl Bevel already turned down an interview with us. He turned down an interview with the Jets as well. So it's kind of showing that guys do have some interest in this job. Of course, you know, people are screaming, you know, people want Byron Leftwich. I wouldn't be mad at that, but his last year was bad. But the years before that were solid. You know, people were saying that Bruce Arians was the main play caller for Byron Leftwich when they had their good years. I'm not so sure of that. But this last year definitely was disappointing by Byron Leffers and the whole Buccaneers team in that offense. They were like ranked 32nd in rushing yards or something like that. They were, they were pretty darn bad. Um, other guy, Craig, Greg Roman, of course, he's a popular name right now. He did a heck of a job with Alex Smith, did a heck of a, heck of a job with Colin Kaepernick, did a heck of a job with Lamar Jackson, in my opinion. Just from looking from afar, I'm not a Ravens fan because, of course, Ravens fans are just jumping like it's Christmas. Like it's a parade that Greg Roman got fired. But everywhere Greg Roman has gone, he's won football games. That's something you cannot take away from him. He's had top 10 rushing offenses, bottom 10 in turnovers. He uh, had a good year with Terod Taylor. He knows how to run offenses as far as turning around running, RPOs, design runs, outside zones. Um, you look at what Lamar Jackson did. You look at what Colin Kaepernick did. Basically what RG3 did. You know, he didn't coach RG3, but you get what I'm saying. With that running quarterback, that dual threat quarterback, where RG3 also said it too, that wide receivers didn't want to come to the Ravens because they knew running backs were going to get a lot of run, a lot of snap, a lot of the um, a lot of the work, and tight ends were going to get a lot of targets instead of wide receivers. Just an offense built around college, zone reads, just wide open guys, guys running wide open because of the threat that the quarterback is running the football. And Greg Roman is tailored to that. Now Ron Rivera, he's looking for two to run pass option or two to pass ratio, two run runs, two to run one pass ratio. That Greg Roman definitely is the guy that you're looking for, for sure. Um, I mean, he certainly fits that bill. Um, being Having top 10 rushing offenses every single year and being in the playoffs basically every single year with Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick, and Lamar Jackson as well. So uh, people are down on Greg Roman. I get why, but at the same time, if that's what they're looking for, then Greg Roman certainly is that guy. I would not be upset if they got Greg Roman. Like I said, people know that this is a lame duck year with Ron, that he definitely could be fired. There's a new owner coming in, and then they're telling that Sam Howell is going to be your quarterback number one for the most most likely. So you, you have a rookie quarterback who's a fifth. You have a second year quarterback who's a fifth round pick. It's not like you have Pat Mahomes or 
Um, who else just got fired? Justin Herbert, their offensive coordinator just got fired. A lot of firings have happened. So there's a lot of teams that are competing with us for offensive coordinators as well. You know, if Tom, if Tom Brady stays in, in Tampa, I think offensive coordinator definitely would rather coach Tom Brady than coming here. Coming here, to be honest with you, with Mike Evans, um, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage, and all the weapons that they have over there, for sure. Um, and we do have weapons here. We do have weapons here with Terry McLaurin, Jahan, and Curtis Hill. We, we, legit, we have a legit wide receiver core, for sure. We have Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson. Um, we have a legit, we have talent. We have legitimate talent on this offense, on the offensive side of the ball, for sure. We need a tight end, though, for sure. Um, another guy, Pat Shermer, of course, we know. Had a good year with Nick Foles. Had, had a good year with Case Keenum. Had a good year with Sam Bradford as well. Now, as a head coach, Daniel Jones looked good. His rookie year, 24 touchdowns, 12 picks. Then he got fired. Now, rushing uh, total yards offense in 2018 as a head coach, they were ranked 17th, which is not good. They were ranked 23rd in, 29, in 2019 under Pat Shermer. And then Denver, as an offensive coordinator, he was pretty darn bad as well with Drew Locke. I think Joe Flacco was a quarterback at the time, too, with Denver as well. They just didn't have a quarterback. They had weapons, Jerry, Judy, and guys like that. Uh, but they were ranked 23rd in uh, scoring, 19th in scoring in 2021. 2020, they were ranked 26, 26th in total yards, 17th in total yards in 2021. So Pat Shermer, Pat Shermer, as of recent, has been bad. But with Case Keenum in Minnesota, he was ranked 11th in yards. And, you know, they had Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen. They had legitimate talent over there. And he did a darn good job with Case Keenum. Did a good job with, in Philly with Nick Foles, too. So he had some good years, and then recently he, he's had some really bad years. But let's get to Thomas Brown here. Let's get to his bio, and then we'll probably wrap, it, wrap this up here. Um, notable players that he coached, Melvin Gordon. He was a running backs coach uh, for the most part. Melvin Gordon, Corey Clement, Sonny Michelle, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is, leg, is a legit running back. Uh, he could probably coached him at Georgia. He was a running backs coach at Georgia. Offensive coordinator at uh, Miami. Uh, South Carolina, he was a running backs coach and a running backs coach in 2020 with the Rams. Uh, strength and conditioning coach at Georgia in, 2020, in 2011 as well. Uh, coach Gus Edwards, Gus the Bus Edwards, Travis Homer, DJ Dallas, and Cam Akers. Um, so he has had, he's had some notable players that he coached as a running backs coach. And as a tight end coach, he's coached Tyler Higby for the Rams as well, who's a, who's a legitimate tight end as well. So um, Thomas Brown, man, he's a young guy. Sixth round pick out of Georgia in 2008. Was a very good running back. Um, only had a two year, hit a hit a short career in college in in the NFL, but he's done a really good job as a coach and has been promoted to the assistant coach, associate head coach with the Rams. So I wouldn't be mad at that as well. And he's a young guy. You know, everybody wants a young, innovative coordinator, so he checks the boxes for that. Let's move on to Eric Studsville, um, coach. He's a running he's a running backs coach with the Dolphins right now, associate head coach as well. Um, in his past, I mean, you look at the trend here. They're getting running backs coach, running back coaches here. Because Ron, wants, he wants to run the football. Remember, he was upset that they didn't run the ball enough against the Giants where Brian Robinson had a darn good game. And they ended up, um, we ended up losing that game. You know, he was, you know, I know he was not happy about that with Scott Turner where we didn't run the football enough in that game. The Sunday night football game is the game that I'm talking about. Um, Sedgeville, he's helped running backs earn three Pro Bowl selections such as Marshawn Lynch, Willis McGahee sees and CJ Anderson. He's also been the position coach for 10 1,000 yard rushing campaigns with Willis McGahee, Tiki Barber, Marshawn Lynch, and Noshaw Moreno, Fred Jackson, and Anderson. Um, he helped the Dolphins post back to back winning seasons in 2020, 2021 for the first time since 20, 2002, 2023. He helped running back Miles Gaskin, a seven round pick in the 2019 NFL draft, led the team in rushing both seasons. Um, so, yeah, Eric, Eric Studsville or Studsville. 26-year NFL coaching rink, so he's been around the league. No ties to Ron Rivera. Um, won a Super Bowl in, in with the Broncos in 2015, where they did beat Ron Rivera and the Panthers uh, when he had Cam Newton. When the Panthers had Cam Newton, so he's been around the league, man. I wouldn't be. He's probably he's not really the top of my list. The top of my list would probably be Thomas Brown, Charles London from the Falcons as well. He's going to be interviewed as well. Um, he was the quarterbacks coach. For the Falcons this past year with Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter, you saw how good Desmond Ritter was running the football with the read option. So that's something that Sam Howell could certainly do. That's the thing. If Greg Roman does come here or Charles London comes here, they could certainly do that with Sam Howell. He's a good runner, man. He's a shifty runner, a strong runner. He can break tackles, and he can make guys miss, and he knows how to slide. That's the thing. Marcus Mariota, when he played against us, he was cutting us up on the ground. He was. In this whole year, the Falcons' rushing offense was a top rushing offense this year, and Marcus Mariota, he did a good job sliding and protecting himself as well, after he got those 10-yard runs against us, he did the right thing and slid and got the first down. So Charles London is certainly an intriguing candidate as well. So that wraps it up for all the candidates that I've seen and heard so far. You guys can let me know what you guys think. Um, I wouldn't be mad at Charles London. I do like Thomas Brown a lot. 
Pat Shermer, I definitely understand. Now, Pat Shermer, his son, was on the practice squad as a quarterback, Kyle Shermer. So there are some ties with Ron Rivera. He did coach with Ron Rivera in Philadelphia as well. So that would be somewhat of a nepotism hire as well there. So I could certainly see that happen with Pat Shermer. But Pat Shermer, he's made some quarterbacks play well. Um, Daniel Jones' rookie year, Nick Foles, Case Keenum. So Pat Shermer, he's not, a, he's not a slouch. He's not a slouch. But it does feel like a retread nepotism hire there or friend, buddy, buddy hire there with Pat Shermer. So, all right, guys. Before we wrap it up, make sure you guys sign up for prize picks. If you have not signed up for prize picks, definitely use the link down below in the description. You get a 100% deposit match. $50 will match you. $25. Up to $100 they'll match you. Um, it's a fantasy score app or over-unders. Easy stuff. So for this week, I have Devontae Smith getting over 62 and a half yards. Use my promo code Real Oliver. It's down in the in the description box. You'll see it on the screen as well. I have Devontae Smith getting over 62 and a half receiving yards. He's, he's smashed the over in the last five games. Also, it's, he's playing against the Giants. The last time he played against the Giants, I think he had like 70 yards, and he caught like a 30-yard bomb on fourth down from Jalen Hurts. So he's going to smash that. The Giants secondary is not good at all. Saw so what happened with the Vikings last week. TJ Hawkinson was getting busy. Other guys were getting busy on the Giants secondary for sure. Um, the other guy I have is Isaiah Pachacho. I have him getting over eight and a half receiving yards. That's a layup to me. Um, the Jacksonville defense, they gave up a lot of yards last week too. They gave up 30 points on the board. So I think Pat Mahomes... Is definitely going to air it out. And I think he's going to hit Pachacho in the flats at least once for like a 10-yard pass. So you guys definitely take the over on that. We'll see. My The team I have winning, I have the Eagles winning on Sunday. I have the, the Chiefs winning on Sunday. If I do another video, I'll do my prediction for the Cowboys 49ers game as well. So we'll see. All right, you guys, make sure you guys sign up for prize picks. If you have not, use the promo code Real at Oliver. You get 100% deposit match. Hell to Commanders. Peace.